1,700 miles from the nearest ocean. Two fishermen cast their lines into the Mississippi River near Alton, Illinois. The year, 1937. Long before GPS, long before sonar, just two men working a muddy stretch of river for catfish. What they pulled up? It wasn't a catfish. It wasn't even a carp. It was something they'd only seen in books. Something no one expected that far inland. It was a bull shark, and it was alive, over two and a half foot long. Somehow, it made the journey up the Mississippi River system all the way from the Gulf of Mexico through countless bends, dams, and freshwater ecosystems, 1,700 miles. Biologists confirmed it. Locals were stunned. Newspapers ran the headline, Shark Caught in Illinois. Some thought it was a fluke, others not so sure. Because the question wasn't just how it got there. It was this, how many more could there be? They say sharks don't belong in fresh water, but someone forgot to tell the sharks. The bull shark is one of the most aggressive species on earth, and it's one of the only sharks known to thrive both in saltwater and freshwater. They're stocky, powerful, broad snouted, and unlike other sharks, they don't need the ocean to survive. Thanks to a biological trick called osmoregulation, bull sharks can shift the way their kidneys and liver process salt. That means they can swim from the ocean into the rivers and lakes, and their body won't completely shut down. You'll find them in the Amazon River, in the Zambezi, in Australia's rivers, and yes, even in parts of the Mississippi. They prefer shallow water, murky water, places where prey have nowhere to hide, and people don't see them coming. Bull sharks have been responsible for dozens of attacks worldwide, and researchers believe they may be behind some of the most mysterious attacks in regions where typically you wouldn't even imagine sharks would be. Their ability to go where other sharks can't has led to strange reports over the years, some verified, others still debated. But one of the most infamous stories, Madawin Creek, New Jersey, 1916. In the summer of 1916, a heat wave swept across northeastern United States. Along the New Jersey coast, vacationers packed the beaches, but they weren't the only ones in the water. That July, five shark attacks occurred within a span of just 12 days. The final three didn't happen in the ocean, but miles inland in a small brackish river called Madawin Creek. Eyewitnesses described a dark shape darting through the shallow water. One boy was pulled under and never resurfaced. A man dove in to search for him and he was attacked too. Local fishermen did catch a bull shark soon after. When they opened it up, they found human remains inside. Now to this day, some scientists still debate whether it was a single shark or multiple. For what it's worth, my vote is probably on multiple. I feel like a feeding frenzy was kicked off when one shark attacked the boy and fired up the other sharks to attack the man. But in my experience in the ocean, when one shark starts feeding, it really fires up the other one. And that event would go on to inspire one of the most iconic thriller stories in American culture, Jaws. But Madawin is not the only place. In Nicaragua, Lake Nicaragua is home to reoccurring reports of bull sharks, some confirmed by scientists. These sharks traveled up the San Juan River, jumping rapids and navigating freshwater currents to enter the lake. They've adapted and they've endured. Now, I'm just trying to imagine a bull shark jumping over rapids like some sort of prehistoric salmon, and it's, it's quite the image. Imagine being the bear on the edge of the shore trying to grab a salmon, and then a shark comes at you. Bull sharks are dangerous, not just because of their aggression, but because of where they show up. In murky, slow-moving fresh water, visibility is zero. Scientists can't track them easily. Locals often don't see them until it's too late. And when attacks do happen, they're rarely caught on camera, rarely documented, and sometimes are not even believed. The environments they enter, the river, swamps, tropical lakes, are already filled with danger. Crocodiles, snakes, parasites, pollution. In some parts of the world, just getting into the water's edge can be a risk studying what might be lurking in it even more so many of the rivers where bull sharks have been seen are remote underfunded and largely unmonitored some flow through political unstable areas others are used daily by locals but they can't afford to stop fishing even if something dangerous was out there 
There are stories of Finn seen slicing through flooded streets during rainy seasons, as if hurricanes can't get any worse, and maybe the Sharknado movies were actually onto something. There are reports of livestock vanishing near riverbanks or bites with no clear cause, and every now and then of a shark caught where no shark was supposed to be. Whether all the stories are true, that's up for debate. Most of the bull sharks caught in freshwater are juveniles, usually between two and four foot long. But even at that size, they are fully capable hunters. And it only takes one bite to change a story from a rumor into a harsh reality. But one thing is clear. In the muddy water, truth hides just as easily as predators. Now we know bull sharks like murky, calm, and often warm water. But as a Michigan boy, I've gotta ask, could they survive in bigger lakes, like say the Great Lakes? It's a question that's been asked before, and it's not as far-fetched as it might sound. Bull sharks are known for their ability to osmoregulate, shifting how their bodies handle salt and fresh water. That's what lets them travel from the ocean into the rivers and lakes. It's the same basic concept behind how salmon migrate upstream to spawn. But while salmon are born in fresh water and move to salt water, bull sharks do the reverse and back again. So biologically, it's possible. But the Great Lakes do come with some different challenges. Water temperatures can drop fast, especially in winter. Prey species would be different for a shark in the Great Lakes. And there are no easy access points from the ocean. The locks and dams along the St. Lawrence River would make it nearly impossible for a shark to swim in naturally. Still, there's no hard rule that says a bull shark couldn't survive if introduced. In fact, a few speculative studies suggest they might actually be able to tolerate it for a short amount of time. But long term, that's a different story. Between the cold water temperatures, especially in winter, and a lack of familiar prey species, it's unlikely a bull shark could thrive in the Great Lakes for any extended period of time. And for me, standing in knee deep water in the shallows of Lake Michigan with a fishing rod in my hand, it's enough to make me nervous and keep my eyes on the shadows in the water. Here's my take on it. Some shark stories are exaggerated, some of them are misunderstood, but a lot of them, maybe more than we care to admit, are true. The idea of a shark hundreds of miles from the ocean kind of sounds like a bad campfire story, until someone goes and pulls one out of the Mississippi, until people start disappearing in a New Jersey creek, and until scientists admit they can't explain every sighting. And when you step into a river or a lake or a flooded plain, you're stepping into a place where the rules aren't always clear. Bull sharks don't care about borders, they don't care about maps, they go where the food is, where the water lets them, where they can survive. And maybe that's what unsettles us the most, because the more you learn about the natural world, the more you kind of realize how little you control it. So next time you're casting a line or wading into dark water, just remember, it doesn't have to be salt water to have teeth.